Hi guys, welcome to today's science workshop. As you can see here, I just added some food dye. And as you can see, it's going down the jar. And when I stir it, it completely turns red. And so this is the start of today's lesson. And so what you just witnessed right now is called diffusion, which is the spreading of a liquid uh, or it doesn't matter really what it is. It could be like the, the perfume that you spray. It may not smell over there, but if you were to blow it that way, it's diffusing. So the food coloring didn't just immediately just cover the entire tube. As you can see here, it's now all red, but at first it wasn't, it was all clear. So in a more scientific way is the movement of molecules in a region from a high concentration to a low concentration. So as you can see here, and I can do it again, I'll pour a little bit more. You can see where it's really red and then where it's not so red, almost like Kool-Aid. And you can see it's starting to diffuse through the jar. And so that's what's gonna also happen with today's project, which is chromatography. And so this is usually used in chemistry, which typically uses alcohol but we can't send you alcohol. And so it's like rubbing alcohol, not the kind you drink. And so we're not gonna be doing that today. So we are going, chromatography is a technique used to separate components in a mixture. And so we're not necessarily separating, but we're more diffusing. So that's why I wanted to include diffusing as well. So enough about today's lesson and today's show and tell. Let's get to our project. All right, guys. So you guys will get a kit and it'll look a little something like this. And so with today's project, this one's a little messed up, but yours will look a lot more better than this. And you will have a foam cup instead of a clear cup because I don't want you guys to look inside and see all the ugly components that make it glow nice and pretty. So this is just a model that I will show you later because some of you might get double A, others might get a nine volt. So We'll go that, we'll talk about that later. But for now, go ahead and take out everything that you have in your bag. So with your bag, you are going to have three, on your bag I should say, you are going to have three strips of uh, electrical tape, two coffee filters, and you should lay them out and spread them out because I'll show you later how to fold it and put it together. You should get two markers. One should be dark, one should be a nice pretty color. You should get one cup, a dropper, third wire, nine volt, a light, and one paper clip. So let's push all of that to the side for now and let's start with the coloring. So what I want you guys to do is take your coffee filter flat and fold it directly in half. So that way you have a half circle. And then you take that and go ahead and leave it like this. So you take one color or both colors and go ahead and just make any kind of design you want. Because remember what I had talked about earlier, which is diffusion? You will witness it diffuse. So I'm just gonna use purple on this one, but on this one, I'm gonna use both. And for this one, you can leave it open or you can fold it as before, but the colors will show. So you can just do like a straight lines, like make a little cross. And then for the black, I am going to use it on the outside all the way around. You can do it however you want. You don't have to do it exactly like me. You can leave the pen there and let it soak, make little dots. You can do it however you want. This is your project for you to do at home. So I'm gonna call it quits right there. And so what you're going to need to do is have some water nearby. And so the water that I'm gonna use is this red dye right here. So before you do that though, you wanna make sure that both of your chromatography are folded like this into a little paper airplane fold like so. 
Also, do be warned, these are very thin. They're not made to be drawn on. They're used for coffee, henceforth coffee filters. So you wanna make sure that you either do it on a table that isn't gonna matter if it gets dirty or not, or do it outside or have something underneath like a, a printing paper or several sheets of paper. So that way it doesn't mark up the tables like this. So what you're going to do is take your dropper, squeeze a little top and get some water inside. Then what you're going to do is place it over right here. And so that way it doesn't drip all over the table. It's just water. So you don't want to make too big of a mess or you can do it over the, the cup that you got the water itself. I'm doing it right here. And then go ahead and just drop it slowly all the way down. So that way you can see it diffuse through the entire sheet of paper. And once you have it down, you can do it lower and make sure to get all of the paper wet. And you can even give it a nice squeeze. And you can really see it diffuse. So once you have it all nice and wet, you don't want it dripping wet. You just want it damp. When you open it up, you got yourself a diffused coffee filter. So what we want to do is, if it's sunny outside, go ahead and place it outside and leave it out to dry for I don't know, depending on the day too. If it's overcast, it's gonna take longer. If it's sunny, like it is today for me, it'll take just a couple of minutes. So go ahead and set that off to the side. And remember, do not set this on the table because if you set this on the table, you'll get uh, a chromatography pattern like this, but in a larger space. So make sure when you set it off to the side that it's either on the floor where it doesn't matter, on concrete outside, or on a sheet of paper of some sort, okay? So. Now let's go ahead and do it on this side. So this is just my only purple one. So let's see how that works. And you're more than welcome to use food dye at your house if you have any. You don't have to use plain water, unless you want to use just plain water. I wanted to get a little creative today, so I use this. Remember, go ahead and give it a little squeeze. Not too hard to where you rip the paper, because you want to, don't want to rip it, you still want to keep it. And then, open it up. And, behold, a pinkish purple. And there you go. So I'm gonna set this outside and let it dry for a couple of minutes. So I'll see you guys after a little bit. Welcome back guys. So with the coffee filters nice and dry, I did two other ones similar to the colors, but a bit different pattern than I did before. And here's what I got. And so with that out of the way, we can go ahead and place them on top of each other, put them off to the side, but don't put them too far because we're gonna get right back to them. Cause now we're gonna take your battery, light, third wire, your paper clip, and your electrical tape. So let's get your light and your third wire and go ahead and give it a nice twist. So that way, all that frayed part of the wire isn't, doesn't go everywhere when you try and make it into a J, which I'll tell you what we're gonna be using that for later. And then the same thing with this is to give it a twist so that way you get a nice straight wire. And then what you're gonna wanna do is take your wires and take it and cross it like this. And twist it. And there you go. And then if you want, cause sometimes it does when you move it around a lot, it does come off. So what you wanna do is go ahead and bend it, give it a little squeeze, but be careful when you squeeze it because Sometimes the wires are shorter than the other and you will get one that will give you a nice good poke. And sometimes if uh, you aren't careful, it'll hurt quite a lot. But if you're careful or if you wear gloves of some sort, you can prevent that from happening. And so 
Now what you can do is take it, your battery, and then go ahead and give it a test. So, okay, it works like this, but the test isn't over yet because now what we gotta do is turn the battery around or your light so you can switch it. I just turned the battery around and test it the other way. Okay, so it works both ways. With that test said and done, the reason that you turn it around and test it is because the light might work one way, but when you turn it around, it might not work the other way. So you got to remember if it works one way, you got to remember which direction it goes. So the long end of the third wire goes on the um, positive side of the battery, so the little circle, and then the light part goes on the negative side, so the big circle. So if that's the case, that's all you have to do and just remember which goes way, which way, because if you do it the other way and it doesn't work and you're wondering why, that's most likely why. So what we're gonna do now is with that J part, we're going to make it into a J or a hook and then you have your paper clip, you have a small part and then a large part. With the large part, it's, the wire will be easily able to get out right here and you're not gonna have a paper clip anymore when you try and look for your project to show your parents or whoever you wanna show. So you're going to use this side right here because it has to go through a whole loop before it can get out. So go ahead and take it right here and then you pinch the copper wire here and then go ahead and give the paper clip a nice twist. Make sure it's nice and twisted so that way either your paper clip won't move or it moves very little. So mine still hook, uh, moves around quite a lot, so I guess that's okay. So if it moves around a lot, you're good to go. You're going to have to now take out your tape on your bag. I already pre-cut mine, so that way I don't have to go through the whole process of tearing it apart. And tape on your, put your tape on your battery, like so. But remember, don't tape it in, very, in the very middle because you only want half of the battery to be covered when you do it. Because if you do both sides, then it's not gonna work out like how it's supposed to. So now, with your other end, your not paperclip side, or your twisted end side with the third wire to the light, with your end that hasn't been touched at all, you're going to either want to lay it across or make it into a little hook. So that way you fit it into the little circle. Because if you have it straight, you can do that, but you want to make sure that it doesn't touch the other side because when you try and connect it, it's not going to work. As you can see here, the light is not turning on. Now it turns on. So I prefer to do it like this, but you're more than welcome to keep it straight. So go ahead and put it inside here, hold it in there, and then make sure that it's inside of it or at least touching it. And then go ahead and tape it real firmly. Get the sides right here tape it down, and good to go. Because now, you're gonna take your paper clip and it's not gonna stay if you leave it like that. It's just gonna go right back where it was. So to prevent that, if it's on the big circle, you're gonna wanna have to bend your paper clip out just a little bit, and then hook it, and there you go. It stays on without you having to hold it on there. Now, if you have the battery that has the paper clip, the paper clip, the tape over the big circle, you're gonna to wanna to leave your paper clip as is, and then it'll hook on just like that. And see, it's not coming off. So, for now, mine has to be stretched out way out here. And there you go, it turns on. So now, go ahead and turn it off for now. That test is done. So what you're gonna do is take your coffee filters, place them on top of each other directly, or off to the side, doesn't matter which way, or one over the other. I'm gonna go like this because I like the black underneath. Take your light, puncture it through the middle, but make sure not to poke your hand. It's not sharp, but if you do it hard enough, it might. Put it in the middle. You can use tape if you would like. I'm not gonna use tape, just to save time. Turn it on, and then take your cup. The light might get hot, so you might wanna hold it right here at the base, not at the light. 
and then go ahead and place it inside and you got yourself a wonderful and beautiful chromatography project with a light inside but remember sometimes the light or the battery could get hot so you don't want to keep it on for very too long don't worry it's not going to cause a fire it's not going to get extremely hot it will get warm however so let me show you how it looks like in the dark so here's how it looks like in the dark or as dark as the room can get and so if you really want your light to show or you don't want it to show like this for instance you could however take it only puncture one of your um, coffee filters, place it inside, and then get your other one and place it directly on top. So that way the light is hidden as so. So either option, whatever is up to your liking, you can go ahead and just make it your project because this is you doing it. So you can make it however you want. I hope you guys enjoyed today's project. And I hope you guys like it at night and you can use it as a nightlight. Or while you're studying at night, playing your games, you can use it for whatever you want. Or as your centerpiece on your dining table. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you guys next time. Come back again and join us for the, for the fun. And right here is all our information. I'll see you guys next time.